Donald Trump, the man who loves a headline about as much as a cheeseburger with ketchup, just dropped a bombshell on EVs, claiming they're a hoax and worse, killing the American auto industry. Is this just another Trumpian tantrum, or is there a pile of truth buried beneath the bluster? In this video, we'll get into Trump's claims, analyze the global EV landscape, and separate the headlines from the hard facts. Over just five years, from 2017 to 2022, the global market for electric vehicles, EVs, went from selling only 1 million units to selling a fantastic 10 million units. Electric cars may appear more popular than ever at first sight. However, I have a sad prediction. EV orders may drop significantly because of the upcoming election. Stellantis is taking a bold step into the future by launching its Dare Forward 2030 plan. This ambitious strategy aims to sell all battery electric vehicles in Europe and a vast 50% of them in the US by the start of 2030. Even though things are moving forward, gloomy clouds are in the background. A few weeks ago, Carlos Tavares, CEO of Stellantis, expressed worries that the fast lane of EV usage might be slowing down. Speaking outside of the Stellantis Mirafiori plant in Italy, Tavares said, people are becoming less interested in EVs, which could slow down total EV sales. He believes the European government elections in June and the US elections in November could change the game. Tavares thinks that changes in politics during these elections could affect the EV business, changing the path of EV sales based on the results. It's a warning that the future of EVs may depend on new technologies and how the political climate changes. The political climate is now chilly for electric vehicles, EVs. If CO2 regulations take a step back, it could spell trouble for the EV industry. Stellantis, not one to be caught off guard, is already sketching out plans to navigate through these potential new conditions. It's a preemptive move that begs the question, how much can a presidential election stir the pot, especially in the EV world? Sure, the presidential election is still a good chunk of months away, but the early signs are waving caution flags. The political breeze isn't strictly painting a rosy picture for pushing mass EV adoption. Stellantis isn't the lone voice in this conversation about politics shimmying the car industry. Ford Motors is tuning into the same station. Last October, Bill Ford, the executive and great-grandson of the legendary Henry Ford, dropped a bombshell. He openly confessed that he never envisioned a day when Ford's products would be smack in the middle of political discussions. And let's not forget that momentary mental flash of Biden test driving the Ford F-150 Lightning when it burst onto the scene. Politics and cars, who would have thought they'd be in the same sentence? But here we are. The looming question, how will these political currents impact the EV industry's trajectory? It's a puzzle, and the pieces are still in flux. The connection between who sits in the big office and how many electric cars roll off the assembly line is more intertwined than we might have imagined. Let's figure out why the US presidential elections and automobile sales are dancing peculiarly. Elections are like dropping a pebble into the pond of economic stability. The waves spread to every part of the country. Why? Because people are scared of the future they don't know. People don't want to make big decisions like buying a brand new car because they don't know what will happen. This is especially true before the election. The catch is that things often change right after an election. Why? When policies are changed, things like taxes, interest rates, jobs, and so on happen. Of course, these changes don't all happen at once. It takes time for the effects to hit home. Do you remember how Obama added the Affordable Care Act? Here comes Trump, who tries to undo that move, but fails. Fast forward to the recent past, and Trump was gearing up for another swing at Obamacare, if he got another shot at the presidency. Presidents don't just issue orders, they also change policies in a way that can be hard to follow. Think about rules for fuel economy, tax breaks for electric vehicles, and everything else. Look at the 2016 and 2020 elections. Car sales dropped sharply in the weeks before each one. Because dealerships knew sales would drop, they offered deals during election years to get people to buy. And do you know what happened after election day was over? As usual, many people wanted to buy cars, so aggregators, markets, and dealerships were all flooded with buyers. Let's get real about the EV scene. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. The fact is EV sales have been taking a bit of a snooze lately. EV inventories have ballooned by 56% compared to last year. That's right, these electric wonders are gathering dust, sitting on the market for an average of 82 days. Put bluntly, they're playing hard to get way longer than their gas-guzzling counterparts. Why are sluggish sales when more incentives are floating around than ever? Well, there's a right of reasons. 
Sure, EV prices are dancing and dropping, thank you Tesla for that September price cut spectacle. But even with the price drops and tax incentives doing a little tango, EVs are still playing hard to catch for your average Joe. What's the big holdup you ask? For starters, the price tag. Even with all the recent discounts, EVs in October were still flaunting a hefty 28% higher price tag than their gas-guzzling buddies. And that's just the sticker shock. Once you peel back the layers, you'll find that owning an EV comes with its expenses. Insurance? More pricey. Home chargers? That's a couple of grand up front. Let's talk numbers. Over the first five years of owning an EV, you're shelling out an extra $5,250 compared to a gas-powered ride. Yeah, that's not chump change. And don't get too starry-eyed about the lower maintenance costs. Being a bit heavier, those EVs munch through tires like nobody's business. If your EV's battery decides to play truant, be prepared to fork over a cool $20,000 for a replacement. Charging anxiety is also something real. 77% of Americans are losing their sleep over the lack of EV charging stations. And let's not forget the skeptics. 57% say they're not too keen on swapping their good old gas guzzler for an EV. Why? Because they're not quite besties with the whole EV concept yet. Let's dig into the nitty gritty of this EV drama. It's not just the slow sales, there's a whole party of problems. First off, the not-so-hot depreciation record. Last year, the average price of used EVs took a nosedive of almost 20%. Now that's the kind of drop that sends shivers down a buyer's spine. People are wary because who wants to be left holding the bag with a ride that loses value faster than a sandcastle in high tide? And let's talk about lifestyle choices. Switching to an EV is like adopting a new lifestyle, not everyone's cup of tea. If you're considering making the switch, you better be ready for changes. Short driving trips? Check. Nearby EV chargers, double check, and patience for the charging time, that's a must. Sure, you can speed things up with a DC fast charger, but here's the kicker. It's a fast track to a shorter battery lifespan. Tough choices, right? Now on to Stellantis, the powerhouse with 14 brands and two mobility arms. They're playing in the big leagues. But guess what? They're feeling the EV heat too. They've got a game plan though, preparing for the possibility of EV sales doing the limbo dance, going lower and lower. And hey, don't be fooled by their recent establishment. This group is the brainchild of a 2021 merger between Fiat Chrysler and the PSA Group. But the competition's heating up. Ever heard of Luxeed? Yeah, not many have, but they're joining the EV Fiesta. And then there's a big name stepping into the EV ring, Huawei. Yes, the smartphone giant is eyeing a comeback in the auto world. Slapped with US sanctions for smartphone sales, they're teaming up with Cherry Automotive, China's car export bigwig. So, Luxeed just dropped its first electric sedan, the Luxeed S7, and its eyes are set on the mighty Tesla. Priced at $35,200, it's like David gearing up to take on Goliath. Luxeed claims its battery pack can outshine Tesla's Model S in every spec. That's a bold move. We're on the edge of our seats to see if it lives up to the hype. But where Luxeed's S7 steals, the show is in the charging game. It's rocking an 800V platform, zapping up a 267-mile charge in just 15 minutes. Talk about speed. Tesla, not to be outdone, has its supercharger network flexing muscles across China. But Luxeed might just have the upper hand in the charging showdown. Luxeed has a unique game plan. The S7 is not just a car, it's a fashion statement. It aims to woo the female crowd with features like a high heel storage spot, a cosmetics drawer, and a quick makeup touch-up mirror. We love a car with some personality, but let's hope it doesn't inspire on-the-go makeup sessions. Safety first, right? The Luxeed S7 is giving Tesla a run for its money at just a fraction of the cost. While the Model S in China is playing hard to get at $98,500, the S7 is the people's champ chilling at a more affordable $13,000. Now that's a game changer. And who's behind this automotive fiesta? Huawei, the smartphone maestro. Is the upcoming presidential election making you second guess that new car purchase? Drop your precious feedback in the comments and hit subscribe. See you in the next video.